But we do have a uh, a potential story of the month. Story of the month. Story of the month. Another yes. candidate. We're, yeah, we're Very keeping hard track. to get in though. And we played the story of the month a few times. Uh, we're not going to play it here. Mm-hmm. Maybe the next time we got a, a potential story that's better, we'll we'll play the actual story of the month. But um, uh, well, the story of the month is principal arrested for meth caught watching gay porn in office. He was smoking drugs, selling drugs, watching porn naked with marital aids. Yeah, gay porn. That is the story of the month. Uh, we got this little ditty. Is this better than the, the story of the month that we just right. uh, mentioned? If you drive past this home, be prepared for what you might see. You're trying not to look. You know he's there. I personally have seen him six or seven times. This woman came to Team 2 looking for help after lodging numerous complaints about what she was seeing. He's naked and he wants to be seen. Naked, completely <laughs> naked. The dog commented too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was dog fur. Yeah, that's dog fur. Sick. <laughs> All right. He's naked and he wants to be seen. <laughs> naked, completely naked. His na- wow. You hear the reporter? Naked, naked. completely <laughs> naked. Oh, I know what sells. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> Woof to you, oh. too, doggy. Dog said, I concur. Does na- doesn't naked just mean without clothing complete? De- naked. De- complete? Completely naked. Yeah, naked is naked. How can you be more without... How can you be completely without clothes when you're already without clothes? It, it just, it's there to make it sound hotter. Naked. Completely naked. Totally. Because at this completely point... Completely hotly naked. Because at this point, you don't you don't know who's naked. So it's the reporter's job to, to, to pull you in and yeah. make it as hot as possible. He's trying to titillate. Like a uh, young teenage girl naked. Ooh. Completely Ooh. naked. Completely. See how much hotter that just got? Woof! But so far, this is a hot story because they haven't told you who's naked. Yeah. And the reporter's really selling it. The dog is helping out. <laughs> Everyone is really, really into the nudity here. The dog. Oh, it takes a drastic turn. Naked and he wants to be seen. Naked. Completely naked. His name is Jimmy Mac McKenzie. He turns 60 next month. <laughs> oh, Neighbors say he's been strutting his stuff in front of them. Since he was in his 40s. He's standing out there, be in the summer and the spring and the rain and the heat. It doesn't matter. It's 20 years. Yeah. The guy's been doing this for that long? Absolutely. And they're just catching on? That's what sucks, man. You finally get your dream of owning a home and you, you, you're you right next to some like crazy this. old naked guy. For the rest of your life. You got a 30 year mortgage. You're oh. like, oh, great. Like, oh, what did, what did I move next door to? Great. I have to deal with this. Pictured nice neighbors. And you're building fences and everything, and it doesn't matter. Well, the reporter tries to confront the, uh, the naked 60 year old neighbor. And what about McKinsey himself? Your neighbors say that you're running around naked in front of people, little kids included. No. Will you come talk to us about it? No! But really. <laughs> oh, if that isn't crazy old guy talk. <laughs> no! No! My health won't allow it! No! <laughs> <laughs> no! Will you come talk to us about it? No! <laughs> but we only waited outside his home 10 minutes to see the so called naked neighbor no. come out in his red and revealing briefs. Neighbors say that's how it starts. He struts out in his underwear and then pulls them off. One of his favorite times to go full Monty, they say, is in the afternoon. Just in time for the Rainier school bus. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Wow. This guy is... He's screwy. Uh, That's classic. Where do you just lose your mind like that and decide you're going to do that? How are they not? How are you not in jail when you're new yeah, exactly. school bus for twenty years? Maybe because he's on his own property. I don't know. No, nah, you can't more do that. To, well, let's find out. We yeah. got we got some more audio here. We've had numerous complaints, yes, and they're all he's just walking around naked. But that's not illegal. Officials from the Columbia County Sheriff's Department say McKenzie can walk all the way down his driveway stark naked. It doesn't matter who sees him, right up to the mailbox, and there's nothing oh. they can do about it. And that's what neighbors say McKenzie does quite often. Strolls all the way to his mailbox on Brownlee Road completely nude. No, I don't like it a whole lot. But Lieutenant Jerry Simmons says his deputies can't do a thing about it. We have to do what the law says. 
if he is walking around uh, trying to rouse himself or others, then that is a crime. Oh, okay. That's so, so as it. long as you're not... Uh, He's not doing it for any sexual purpose. As long as you're not fiddling. Yeah, no fiddling. As long as you don't do any of that fiddling. Don't fine. fiddle. Just walk to your mailbox. You could be naked in your own... Pro How great is that? Who knew? We gotta test this out, is what I'm thinking. I wish I could afford the place right next to Anthony. I would just do nude... <laughs> nude jumping jacks. <laughs> uh, you can't do that. You would, you would be arrested. It's not too late. You'd always be in a state. <laughs> They'd look at my body and go, there's no way he could think this arouses anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer feedback is loving the no. That no is classic. Bird from Philly and no. a few others saying the same thing. No! No! <laughs> wow, he we got to test out this later. theory. Yeah, where is that? Because uh, certain uh, laws may vary in Do we know certain where places. Do stories coming out of? We'll find out. we got to test a theory, obviously, with hot women. Hot bodacious women. Just, yeah. I just want women to walk up and down their driveway to their mailbox is all the, morning long. Is the fact that they're hot alone, like titillating? Because this guy's like 60 years old. I'm sure they don't look at him and think, you know, ooh. Right, right. But uh, if it's a, a hot woman, perhaps that in itself is titillating. That's sexist. Of course it is. <laughs> as long as, as long as there's no fiddling going on. So yeah, we should give that a try. Yeah, let's. Uh, we gotta we gotta learn a little bit today. I know mm. learning is for queers, but we gotta get to the bottom yeah. of this one because we want to try this one out. We want to get some hot women to just walk up and down their driveways. Get the male naked. Yeah, get the male naked is the bit. Mm -hmm. Although the males delivered in the afternoon for the most part, so. Uh, your newspaper? Yeah, there you go. Get the morning newspaper. Just naked. walk to your curb naked. Maybe we could try it out today. Yeah. Maybe maybe someone is willing to try it out today. <laughs> Not in New York because it's freezing, although that would make it even funnier. So uh, We got more to the story. But some of McKinsey's neighbors say it's much more than a birthday parade. When we told them that we had seen this gentleman outside in his driveway... They said, "Well, all right. What did we? What? What it was? What was bleeped? She called him a, a MF. Oh, really? No, I don't. <laughs> I guarantee you, it was because he was aroused. Oh, really? I'm guessing. No, no. Oh, oh. that he was fiddling. Oh, okay. That perhaps he was fiddling. Okay. You can't and outside, in his driveway. <laughs> they said, well, you know, the first time they said, well, we'll send somebody out, but we're busy today. Team 2 has obtained police and court records showing McKinsey was charged with public indecency three times between 1989 and 2004. According to records at the state appeals court, he also admitted to molesting a toddler. In 2005, McKinsey was arrested again. This time he was charged with 50 counts of encouraging child sexual abuse. Well... Like, uh, dude, I was just thinking about this yesterday. Count, is that because a bus went by and like, <laughs> and he's and he's, and he's doing that? More, so it's like he's doing more than just standing there naked. Let's yeah, just put that, it that way. That sounds like a charge that they had to come up with. And that's what sucks. You buy a house and you're stuck with this guy for, yeah. like I said, thirty years. I was thinking yesterday, man. Every every day there's a there's another story in the paper about some pervert. Yeah. And it's usually something with kids. There's a story uh, today about a mom walking into her apartment somewhere in New York. Her 13-year-old daughter is topless, and the repairman, I forgot what job he was uh, doing, is there trying to talk the girl into some kind of sexual act. And the mom just grabs her daughter like, what the hell's going on, and yanks uh -huh. her out of the uh, apartment, and then the guy gets arrested. But every day there's a story in the local paper. Wow. It doesn't matter what city. It's an epidemic. Yeah. Was it always? Huh? I wonder. Was it always, but just not reported? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's it's one of those things that uh, gets people paying attention. Like if there's a a kitty porn story on the news, you're watching because everyone yeah. has kids or know you know obviously know someone with kids. Yeah. Or if it's in the paper, you're reading those stories before you're reading about how gas prices are going up. Everyone can get behind that too and just look and go, what a creep. Like what a ugh, what a ghoul! They convicted that guy that killed that girl in Florida. Oh, Cooey, Paul that, Cooey. Oh, yeah. What a ugh. he! What kidnapped her, raped her, and then burned oh, her alive. Terrible. Horrible story. Yeah, that yeah. bastard. Lunsford. They should just give the father a pistol and just let him execute him. Yeah, let him do it. Castrate him. I mean, come on. Let's get a little archaic with the laws here and uh, with the executions. Let the guy do it. 
And then you got the people that are against execution, and you see a story like that in the paper. Yeah, why should that guy and, live? And I don't feel like arguing the point all morning. Like, just logically, it doesn't make sense that you 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 would think that it's fine. This guy should live. Yeah. Don't tell me it costs more to blah blah. I don't care. Yeah. Who cares? It's you, it's you get the guy off the earth. You know what? The family sleeps at night a little bit. Yeah, it's vengeance. And she was nine, and he buried her alive. I mean, how do you how yeah. do you not? Uh, Think this guy should die. This guy's going to turn die. around in prison. And if it costs more to put someone to death, well, let's spend the money. How about this? You stop forgiving foreign debts for favors. You mm -hmm. make them pay what they owe. We take that money and put a few people to death. And people think the life in prison thing is, uh, you know, well, he'll never see the light of day again. He's going to be in prison, locked up. It's a people social make, club. People make of their life whatever it is. So it, whether you're uh, living high on the hog or you're in prison, that's your life. You have to live it. You you have moments of happiness, moments of sadness. You got your your, your good times, your bad times. It's still the same thing in prison. That just becomes your life. So after you know the initial, I don't know how many years it would take, but it just becomes that is now what you're doing. Yeah, that's how you live your life, yeah. and it's no more. It's it's not a punishment. You have your wants. You want to be free, but everyone's got what they want in life and can't attain. So for them, it's freedom. But the rest of their life is just they're existing. That's why I don't believe that life in prison is uh, uh, quite as, as much a punishment for these people as uh, a lot of people think. Just kill them. This guy's worthless. We could take calls from people that uh, did some time in jail, and, and it would piss off a lot of people. Because I, I think the average person has no idea how how uh, how prison really is yeah. and how it's not as bad as you think in your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just thinking. Of, I'm sorry. I'm kind of quite upset because Voss is coming in. I'm just thinking of how he would, how he's going to try to talk about this. Oh, put like, his spin on it. Like you know, when it comes to kids, he's going to put his little stupid hand up and try to like maybe like a kid advocate, and you're just going to all of a sudden side with with the pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Such an He'll ass. turn everyone around. Yeah, they should let him go. <laughs> Here's the last bit of the story. Deputies say they searched his home and found boxes and computer hard drives stuffed with child pornography. This go. guy was was charged with kitty porn, and you're telling me he's not showing an interest in the children on the school bus? Where else are you going to get that big an audience? Yeah, man, he's playing giant stadium. <laughs> yeah. As far as pedophiles go, there you wow. go. He's playing giant stadium. i got to be naked. <laughs> right. I'll go get the mail naked. <laughs> <laughs> Some publicity. <laughs> How you doing, kids? <laughs> if you're a pedophile, that's got to be the greatest gig you could get. Naked in your driveway in front of a school bus school filled with bus. children. Yeah. How does it get any better than that? How does that, what, what the because hell is this? If he's got kitty porn on his computer, what's wrong stuff? with this guy? How how are you? Why are you so like, crazy about it? If you have child porn, why are you naked in the front? Yeah, why are you not in jail? Why are the neighbors not stomping his brains out? <laughs> Why not just kind of keep it under your hat? Yeah. You don't need to be naked, but you have... You know. Literally, just walk out with a hat over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got to take a break. Right. That's not story of the month. It got uh, sad. No, no. It got kind of sad. <laughs> sad. It was, no! It started out kind of funny. I thought, no! I thought it was just some old codger. Yeah. Just walking around nude, hoping Cute like... little old guy. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking he was doing it for the neighbors and stuff. Maybe the hot... Uh, the hot, you know, wife left behind as the nah. husband goes to work, you know. And, but then he, <laughs> all the it, kids look and laugh when they drive by. It's right. gotta be, like, like the adults are like, oh, shocking. The children, they're passing by yeah. on the bus. If that was me, every day passing by, we just all would look and point and laugh. Look at the old naked guy again. He's out. He's out. Everybody goes over to one side of the bus. All right. <laughs> bus is ready to tip over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It'd be traumatizing. It'd be funny. Yep. All right. It's the Opie and Anthony show. Kind of scary. We got a lot of uh, <laughs> ex cons calling our show right Whoa. now. <laughs> well, now we know where our uh, audience is. We just found our audience. We kind of said before the break that this uh, life in prison is not, it's no big deal to some people. It just becomes the reality that is your life and you, you lead it. You know, obviously, we would think it would be a horrible thing to go into prison, anyone who's not in prison. But then once you're in there, that is your life, so you have to live it. So it's, it, it becomes a, a thing that isn't as bad as people who aren't in prison think it is. I there. spent one night in jail, and it's just a terrifying reality. It's yeah. terrifying. Especially when you look like I do. I mean, 
Oh, yeah, cute. It's, it's frightening. I mean, I'm not a tough looking guy. <laughs> no, soft little idiot. Yeah, terrible. Oh, wait but over time, you would just that would, would become whatever. You, you would be a, you would be a muscle head. No. You would Word. just you would just no. take it. Well, I'd take it. I mean, I'd try to go pay, cut that out. Well, the word head would come in probably, but I don't think muscle would really <laughs> be. <laughs> Sir, my first name isn't Gimme. <laughs> What's the, what is the reality? If like all three of us were in prison uh-huh. doing hard time, like what would happen? Would you just give in, Jimmy? No. Would you just fight to the end? Well, I don't know. I'd probably, I'd probably object loudly. <laughs> I'd do it. Warden. I would be objecting and lifting as much weight as humanly possible, hoping that eventually it goes away. I'd do what I did in school. I'd be the funny guy. Yeah. And, and hope that, that gets that you through? Hope that works. And then I'd join the Aryans. <laughs> And get some swastika tattoos. <laughs> Join them. They'd probably tell you you're too radical. <laughs> Ed would shave his head the first night. Who are I you have kidding? To. Who are you kidding? Some tats. Yeah, let's say hi to uh, D in Connecticut. D, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? You were in prison? No, actually, I'm, uh, I'm a CEO. I work there. Oh, a CEO. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. What do you got? Um, I, As you were saying before, these guys don't have it that bad. Once a couple years go by... They get settled in. They got TV. They got all the local channels. They're sitting there. They're watching wrestling, NASCAR, baseball, yeah. NFL, the news, everything. I don't think it's a big deal if you could sit around and discuss what happened on American Idol last night. Yeah, they could do that. I think that's that. a little better than uh, killing somebody. And then they have a lot of things that occupy their time. And I don't think it's so much because they, they want to give these prisoners so much to do uh, as it is they don't want them rioting. Or, you know, doing things to the guards. So they occupy their time with things like school. They have libraries. Uh, these guys decide to become lawyers and work on their own cases. So they're, they're using their time. They're not sitting there toiling and, and, and thinking about what they did. Watch this horrible TV. crime of, of murdering a girl and burying her alive. This guy, you know, he's going to be in there, uh, uh, yeah, watching TV, doing that. Of course, it'll probably cross his mind every so often, but there's so much to do in there. And they give them so much to do so they don't riot and kill guards and stuff. It's not that big of a deal if you could get lost in a book. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just get lost in a book. You know, here's a guy that uh, kidnapped, raped a little girl, yeah. buried her alive. But uh, fast forward maybe a few months, he's going to just be in his cell lost in a book. Yeah, just, uh, I'm reading. Well, <laughs> just lost in a book. <laughs> Turning pages and, and laying down them. And these watching. people against the death penalty, they just don't get it. They don't get it. And they go, well, it has nothing to do with justice. It's just the retribution and revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes that's good mm-hmm. enough. And in, in this case, like uh, Jimmy said, the, the father should absolutely be able to just kill the guy when something like that happens. And it's usually people who are not, not always, but like, you know, obviously his son was murdered. It's usually people who are not the parents of murdered children who are like completely anti-death penalty. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, D, thank you. Yeah, one more thing, guys. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, another thing. A lot of guys that are in there don't want visitors from the outside because they don't want that reality of what's going on. Yeah, because they got their own reality in there, and it's working for them. And then once a visitor comes in, they, they realize, oh, yeah, there's an outside. All right, guys. I'm putting yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Let's say hi to uh, John from Florida, another CEO. What's up, John? Hey, how you guys doing this morning? Hi. Hey. All right, yeah, uh, like the other guy was saying, you know, these guys, they have it so freaking easy. I mean, they got more rights than we do, for crying out loud. Yeah. You know, they're allowed to complain about us. You know, they're allowed to sit there and write us up, you know, and get us in trouble, you know, for doing our job. Yeah, and that seems like something like busy work. Like, just to pass the time, why not uh, complain about a CO, write out a complaint? You know, that'll, that'll kill my day. You know, there's oh, yeah. another day down the tubes that I could just mark off with my piece of chalk on the wall in my yeah. 1800s jail cell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. What am I, an These idiot? Guys, you know, like, like the lifers, you know, they have, you know, they don't even really care about what goes on in the prison because they're there for life, so they don't really give a shit. Yeah. Oh. The short timers, you know, it's the guys that aren't in there for that long that, you know, make all the trouble and everything else, you know. Uh, yeah. The ones that end up coming back and coming back until they finally do end up killing somebody. Yeah, the guys that are in there for a long time, they don't care. They're, that's their life. And you get yeah, used exactly. to your surroundings no matter what. It, it becomes the it becomes your life. People it becomes are very your adaptable. lifestyle, and you're adapting to prison life. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, and then there's there's guys that can't adapt to prison and you know sit there and cry at night and say, oh, you know, I don't I don't deserve to be here and da 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 da. 
Then the guards you know, beat then, him to death. Yeah. Well, and someone really. wins a I bet. Mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan, thank you. Uh, uh, John, I'm sorry, John. Uh, I, I was, Ryan on instant feedback. This is this is very rare, so we got to stop the show and, and point it out. Oh, Ryan from Minnesota, Anthony murdering a girl and burying her alive. Come on, man. Anthony's rarely, rarely wrong. <laughs> murdering a girl and burying her alive. <laughs> oh, did you say that? I, yeah. I, I, I wow. How dumb I am. I didn't catch it when you said it, or when Oprah just read it. I didn't steal it. Like, what's wrong with that? That is awful. Wow. How did he do that? Brought her back to life. Just to do it. Here you go. Let's say hi to Pittsburgh. Uh, paying a little attention to Pittsburgh. Jimmy's going to be in Pittsburgh starting tonight at the Improv, right? Tonight through Sunday, yeah. Uh, let's say hi to Eric. Eric, what's up? I get rape hey, and murder you? mixed up. You're the greatest. <laughs> huh? Hey, my, my daughter's uh, mother, first of all, was never married to her. She goes to prison. She's in prison for about eight months. She writes my daughter a letter for the first time. And uh, the first thing she says is, who do you think is going to win American Idol? That Chris, he's real hot. That Chris is real hot. Yeah, so what's that, what's that prove to you, how easy prison is? I think if you can watch TV, then prison is a breeze. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> then she draws her a picture with these beautiful crayons and markers, and I yeah. guess I don't let them have I like that, to simplify but... everything around me. If you can, if you can watch TV in prison, then it, it's a cakewalk. Because that's, that's what because that's what we pretty much do in our our our, our, our lives. You know, dur during our lives on the outside. The here is the Look, only wanna, thing that's I, I bad about prison. prison. Here, hold, hold, hold on, on two there. seconds. The only thing bad about the prison is that you don't want to get raped. Yeah, in between shows, you're looking over your shoulder. That's pretty much it. Because if the show's interesting enough, even the rapists are watching. They, they're they're going to wait for a commercial <laughs> break or something. So so you can even focus on the show. Commercial comes, you're looking around like, oh, boy. Yeah, oh, boy, what's oh, going to happen? Boy. But that really is the only <laughs> thing that would keep a lot of people from going to prison. Right. Because it seems very structured. Some people like that structured lifestyle. You got TV. You got people telling you what you got to do. There's activities. It's like camp. Yeah. But with the, you know, rape. It's it's bad camp. It's still like camp. It's, yeah. <laughs> well, some kind of football camps. And let's Pine be honest. Cone. And let's be honest. That just makes your day a little more exciting. <laughs> wondering. Yeah, wondering. Yeah, maybe some people that spices it up. You yeah, never yeah. know. You never know what's over your shoulder. You should. It depends on your crime. I mean, if you if you are a guy that's sitting back, and if you're an armed robber or something like that, I mean, you should have a library and ways to improve your life a little bit because you're going to be coming back out anyway. But you know, anyone, anything with kids, they should just be their, their condition should it should be barbarism. Yeah, yeah. Their condition should be just inhumane. Yeah, absolutely. Old school, medieval. Absolutely. Black and white TVs, you know. Yeah, Sam in Pittsburgh. What's up? Rabbit ears. Sam. Yeah, give them three channels. Yeah. <laughs> Static in the middle of their shows. A black and white TV with three channels. That's oh, that's gruesome. Uh, Sam, uh, what's up? Hey, those other two beanbags took every word I wanted to tell you about. Oh, uh, see? Prison. But I'll tell you a different aspect. When you got uh, gay guys coming into the prison, that's a whole different story, guys. Oh, yeah? Oh, man. It's it's like apple pie given to a monkey. I mean, these monkeys, they sniff out these gay guys, man. And we had the biggest problem with these uh, beanbags coming in and... I mean, they would volunteer to do stupid stuff, you know what I mean, to get in trouble, to get isolated with some of these guys. So they would be isolated with other men so they can uh, do be what? sexually uh, uh, Well, you know, they jump, on, they jump on a trampoline without the trampoline, you follow me? Oh, yeah, boy, yeah. <laughs> so wait, the gay guys wanted to be isolated or the other guys wanted to be with the gay guys? Well, the, the, the homosexual, what would happen was when you get in trouble, you get isolated into a, like a, a certain part of the jail, meaning you got your Hispanics on one side and you got your blacks on one side and I don't care what any other CEO tell you, that happens because you can't mix them sometimes. Right. You, you follow me? Yeah. And these guys would come in here and say a white guy would come in, right? He, he'd be a, a gay guy or a Hispanic or whatever. He'd come in and he'd figure out which one of those three holes had any gay guys in there. So then he started complaining about the cell that he was in, you know. He'd make trouble with somebody in there. Then he'd get put into another cell, you know, depending on what he did. And eventually, they'd get the gay guys. they sniff each other out. And we'd come in, you know. you got to hurry up, Sam. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking like you're doing the time yourself. 
<laughs> yeah, oh right? my God. Wow, I felt like I was doing a sentence. Holy crap. I nodded anyway, off. I'm trying, I'm trying to get thrown into another radio show for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we. <laughs> I wish he would. Well, those beanbags, they took everything I was going to tell you about them, you know? So, yeah, obviously. I, I have no idea what this guy was trying to say. I, I know, I, I phased out for a I, second. I phased out. So the gay guys, if, if the guy wants to be isolated with gay, he'll find out. Blacks, whites, Hispanics are all sectioned off in these isolation places. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the guy yeah. will get oh, thrown on the hole. He'll kind of understand where the gay guy is. So he'll have a yeah. problem. With, uh, all right. Well, actually, I was going to say you talk. You would know, but you would. But you're just not. So it's his goal battle. to get in a cell with, with a gay, gay guy, guy yes. to beat him up or just to have relations. Right, sex. All right. To have yeah, relations. Then you're going to have some okay. sex. All right. Thank Don't you, Sam. Problem. You could have done that in 10 seconds. Some of that prison sex. Jimmy wrapped it up in no time. Absolutely. And I made it a hot little attractive package. Right. Uh, John and Dub. Bronx. What's up, John? I almost crashed my car listening to that last caller. No kidding. Wow. Getting a lot of Z's on the instant feedback. Oh, my God. Listen, as far as law enforcement's concerned, there's a lot of things those cops in that area could do to that old man because nobody entertains complaints from a pedophile. They don't care about it. So you think the cops could uh, do a, a thing or two? Uh, all I'm going to say is I can't get into specific because the... Uh, Statues of limitations aren't over yet, but nobody entertains complaints with a pedophile. Everybody hates him. The most liberal piece of, the most liberal person in the world, does not care about a pedophile. And they certainly hate him in in the joint. Uh, I don't know about that. But yeah, they put him in like uh, protective uh, custody. Is that a myth honest. though, or is that the truth? I I, I did hear one case where mm. they 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 tattooed the the victim's name, the little girl's name, on the guy's face. Is that true? Did we talk about that? Yeah. They, they tattooed her name on his face. That's a good one. Yeah. All right, thank you, sir. Let's uh, let's say hi to Neil in Stanford. Neil, what's up? We got a hot hey, topic. What's up, guys? Hot topic. I love you guys. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, I did time in Connecticut almost a year, and, and it ain't as bad as I mean, unless you touch the little girl or something, then you know you're gonna get messed up. But I had a color TV, a Game Boy, CDs, a CD player. <laughs> <laughs> Radio, listening to you guys every morning. That's great. See, it, see, it, 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 at all. it took 20 minutes, but these are the phone calls we're looking for. What did you? What uh, you have in the joint? This guy had everything. He had more than most most of our listeners. Yeah. What did you do? What, what were you? What were you in for? Uh, possession of deadly weapon. Oh, what did you have? I had a knife in my car. Oh. You did a year for a knife in your car, uh, dude. Come there's on. something else going on. Yeah, what happened? Unpaid parking tickets? Not first uh, offense. Uh, a little, a little bit, of, a little bit of marijuana. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Not it, your, not uh, your first offense. Probation and all that. And, yeah, a, yeah. and all right, a kilo of coke in my. Uh, yeah, and I was drunk. already, I was on <laughs> probation for murder. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, I love you guys. You guys are the best. Hey, uh, what uh, game were you playing? What game was I playing? Yeah, yeah GTA. Metroid. You know Metroid. Uh, Metroid. Metroid. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. That's an older game, so you've been out a while, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's say hi to Mike. Keep your nose Syracuse. clean. Yeah, Mike, Let's what's up? That. Hey, how's it going? No, I uh, I lived in North Carolina. I had a buddy, Bob, and uh, I'll tell you, they, they have a lot of stuff in jail. Because <clears throat> he used to get out, you know, once a week. He'd hang out on the weekends or something, or depending on how often he went in. But he'd go in just to have a place to stay because he'd get kicked out of his house or something. He's like, yeah, I got no place to stay. It's cold. I'll go to jail this week. What's that? Mayberry? The hell is... uh, no, I, I lived in uh, towards the Outer Banks, right right in the Outer Banks there. I've I've heard this before. Because <laughs> you, you don't have a place to, to sleep, and, and, and you get a nice little bed in jail. Yeah, so he'd, uh, he'd go out there. And now there is, you know, you got the other side, too. You got to think about the bad things that happen. Because I, uh, I know, personally, a gay guy that murdered someone. He's been in since uh, the 80s. And, uh, you know... Wow. He has, he has a lot of stuff. But, you know, at the same time, they have a lot of stuff they have to deal with. I mean, he's got guys, you know, that try to beat him up. So then he's got to go, uh, you know. Yeah, but you know what? I, I think after a while, if you're doing a, a pretty long sentence, yeah, you become friends. Eventually, you just become friends. You're seeing the guys trying to rape you year after year. Eventually, hey, it's like, you, you know back? what? Hey, man. Hey, what's going what's on? What's up? How, how are you doing today? Uh, pretty good. It's kind of like that old cartoon with, uh, you know, uh, cl uh, clocking oh, in. Yeah, where the uh, <laughs> the sheepdog right. and the wolf, yeah. they punch in. How you doing, Sam? Uh, pretty good. Ching. And then the guy sits there, and they try to kill each other the whole time. And then the whistle blows, and they uh, punch out. I'd imagine you, you become friends eventually with some of these yeah. some of these people because you're like, ah, 
But, well, but does it get to the point where you're being raped and you're like, hey, did you see the game last night? <laughs> right. All right. Let's get this right, over. Because you're friends, so I'm you're hungry. talking about that. Right. You know. <laughs> what do you? You have some kind of a common bond. Like maybe the mess hall is painted. Do you like just notice that together? Like while he's raping you? Like, <laughs> right. The, the stupid green mess hall and the guy. Yeah, it is kind of weird. That they painted it green. Yeah. And continue brutalizing. It. <laughs> right. <laughs> You just notice the subtle changes around you. Yeah. It becomes you got, a relationship. You got to think you become friends. <laughs> I mean, the newbies that come in, I'm sure that's a whole nother thing. But the guys you're doing the, the, the time with year after year, yeah. eventually it's just like, all right, hey. I, I'm done with you. What are you doing tonight? Why don't we watch, watch some wrestling tonight and, and talk about life? Uh, Jamie in Florida. Yeah. You, you did uh, five years for burglary? Yeah. How, how tough was it in the joint? Uh, it wasn't. If you can get past the first year, it ain't too bad after that. Yeah, the first year is the the rough one. Yeah. Why? Uh, the first year is when you got to prove yourself. Hmm. If you don't prove, if you don't prove yourself, then they're gonna take that. You know what? Well, how'd you prove yourself? Uh, you just gotta. Well, I I was pretty much like Anthony. I was the funny guy. <laughs> You're com- funny guy. Com- comedy gets you out of a lot of. Trouble being silly can get you out of a lot of messes. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I imagine if someone's having their way with you in the shower and you're just laughing through they're the cracking whole thing, jokes. I think yeah. that's the last time anyone has their way with yeah. you in the shower because that's just creepy. Especially if you do impressions, you can just do the creepiest movie voices, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, and then if if <laughs> if it turns out that he wants to say um, uh, uh, sodomize you in a certain way, uh, you just hold something like a telephone and go, "Hello, hello." <laughs> <laughs> I would just have the most. Psych- you're in the shower, Jim. I would have the most psychotic laugh. And they want you to do something right. to them. Okay. You just you 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 grab a certain thing ah, and hold it phone. hold <laughs> yeah. it up to your ear and go hello <laughs> hello <laughs> call Benson for hurts. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would get around the the gym. Yeah, that's funny. You you do a psychotic laugh. People they're gonna be like. Ugh. There's other people to do this too. You got to just go. Is it turn around and and go? Is that all you got? <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> hey Jamie, what do you have in your cell though? Um, I didn't. I didn't have a whole lot of stuff in my cell. He had a TV, and I mean, it's that's like it's like camp. I mean, see, he did five camp. years, and he's admitting it was like camp after a while. Yeah, it, I mean, it's not. Are you? Once you're acclimated, it's not that bad. I mean, it's, it ain't no more than normal life. I mean, except you ain't got no bills. Or dude, women. Dude. And you, you got no bills. There you go. Yeah. Hey, dude, how was your burglary five years? You must have, like, woke someone up, I guess, huh? No, I actually, it was a neighbor, and... You tied I her got, up. I got, I got... All I got out of that was probation, because it was my first offense. Yeah. But... Um, a year later on probation, I went on a high-speed chase with the cops through three counties, and the judge <laughs> didn't like that very well. So I got three years for the burglary, and I got two years for running from the cops. Man, did you make uh, America's wildest uh, police chases or anything like that? No, I committed my crime in Ohio in a small town, so it wasn't, you know, not it wasn't. It was a big headliner there, but it didn't reach no big city. So I mean, uh, well, better luck next time. God, you know what? We just found our audience because uh, yeah, I know the wow. phones have never been hotter. They just uh, love robbing people. <laughs> Did three years. Audience. Let me just read these real fast before we go to break. Did three years for assault after shooting robber in my house. Oh. Uh, homeless guy always did something to go to jail every winter to stay warm. I hear they have liquid soap in prison now. Gays are segregated from general population. Did seven years for armed robbery. Guards protected uh, the pedophiles. Been to jail twice. Only only the willing get raped. I was in jail. People rape the pedophile. This is our audience. <laughs> Can we get to some of these guys when we come back? There's some lovely stories here. Yeah, we'll get to a few more of these stories. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Rich Voss joins us next. All right, we don't want to lose these people. Yes. They've been on hold for a long time. Greg on Long Island, what's up? You're on hey. the Opie and Anthony Show. What's up, fellas? How's hey. it going? I'm pretty good, man. I don't, I don't know too much about it, but when I was in Arizona last year, Ow. I was visiting my cousin, and he did a stretch in uh, a place called Tent City. Oh, I heard about Ward, this place. Tent Ward City Ward rules. Yeah. Yeah, where the warden makes you, no matter what crime you do, you're out in the heat 365 days a year wearing pink pajamas and pink slippers just to make an example out of you. But you're under tents, right? Yeah, you're under tents, but it doesn't matter. You're like, in the middle of the summer, it could be, you know, 120 degrees out there, but they don't care. You're stuck outside all day, no matter what the temperature is, wearing pink pajamas just to make an example out of you. Boy, that, that's what they're, that's that particular 
penal system? Like that's the jail, Tent City? Yeah, that's what it's called, Tent City. And you drive by and there's just tents set up all around the place. Like I said, I don't know too much about it. I didn't get a chance to, you know, visit it while I was visiting there. All right, here's but, the deal, uh, though. Here's the deal. I, I hear about the pink, uh, you know, outfits, whatever you want to call them, uniforms, uh, prison uniforms. Yeah. Is it really a big deal if everyone's wearing pink? Right. It becomes the thing. Oh, if you, oh yeah, because it's like it's like regular jail here where everybody's wearing blue. I guess you get stuck, you know, you get used. But to I'm just saying it. It's much more effective if you just have just a few of the guys in pink. Yeah, then it becomes like <laughs> pink. Then it's a joke. But if you're all wearing pink, what's the big deal at that yeah, point? That's, that's how you yeah. can't run. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's better to make an example out of somebody who did something worse by sticking them in a pink yellow, you know, pink outfit as oh, opposed oh, wait, to everybody dude, wearing it. I'm, I'm just, in Tent City, you're outdoors in our, all day, I mean, even though it's hot. Yeah, but, out, outside all day. That's what I was told. That you're just you're stuck outside, no matter what the temperature is. You're under tents. All day long, they set up cots for you, and you sleep outside. Do they have any air or conditioning, or no? And no, not that I know. Of, no. That's yeah. You just stuck yeah, out that's there, a, and that's it. That sounds a lot worse than Rikers. I got to be honest with you. I'm, yeah, just because I mean, especially <laughs> in the summertime, who wants to be stuck out there in 120 degree weather, just sweating? It's awful, nothing dude. Nothing to do about it. I would take the outdoors over the inside, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think I'd have to agree with that. Especially in a tent, you feel like you're camping, having some fun, you laugh. Yeah, right. but the outdoors, you see people living right outside of you, you know, driving by and living. My cousin did a couple of years in Arizona in prison, and he's as goofy a Jew as anybody could be. And I, he told me that, you know, a skinhead or Aryan walked into his cell and, and you know, punched him in the face. Cool. And then, then the uh, guy's walking down the tier, and my cousin ran up from behind him and kicked him and punched him in the back of the head or whatever, and they didn't mess with him the rest of the time he was in prison. Because he fought back. Yeah. Yeah, you got to right. prove yourself mm -hmm. a little bit. Let's say hi to Justin in Boston. Justin, what's up? Justin. Hey. All right, we're moving way too fast. We can't wait around today. Roger, Michigan, what's going on? Good morning, fellas. Hey. Yeah, you're on. <laughs> Jesus. Good morning. Hey. You don't take orders yeah, very well. I'll, I'll... Good morning, Roger. How are you today? <laughs> get the pleasantries over with and yeah, we don't, get to the story. We don't do pleasantries on this show. Waste too much time. We're only on the air like three hours on this gotcha. side. we got to get did, right into stuff. Let's go, Roger. I did 10 years in prison, and it's nothing like these guys are talking about. I don't know where they did time in prison, but I did I did almost uh, uh, two years on a hold just because of the fighting that I did throughout all the time I was in there. All we had was black and white TVs. Uh, uh, pedophiles, uh, they didn't get messed with any longer because they were rats and they were, they were the police, they were the guards, little, 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 um, um, puppets. So, they, they didn't have no problem. Where'd you do your time? Well, I did my time in Michigan, all of it. Okay. Ten years for what? I used to rob places. <laughs> I used to rob places. Is that on your Just, resume? Uh, yeah. <laughs> beating around a bush. I dabbled in a little robbery. Yeah. What do you do now? Well, I, I actually I, I work for uh, construction. Okay, so you're on the straight and narrow, huh? Yes, have to be. I have a family. What's it, the worst oh. part of being in jail? Like, what do you miss the most when you're in jail? Uh, women. It is okay. Well, that's uh, it. Yeah, that's that, it. That would be uh, top of the charts, obviously. What's the second thing you miss? Uh, normal food. Just normal food. As a yeah. white, as a, you, as you sound like a white guy. Were you in the uh, Aryan Brotherhood or any uh, 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 gangs there? No, I wasn't. I'm actually a Native American, so I was pretty isolated from a, a lot of people, and that's why I did get in so many fights because uh, I have long hair, and so I was a, I was a pretty guy to the black guys, but I wasn't backing down to anybody. So, well, like say like okay, so you got Aaron Brotherhood Muslims and all that. Say like uh, just a Jew goes into prison. Who where does he? Who does say he? He owns it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, there's certain people. Like, what happens? Like when something like that happens, say like, a, uh, ah, yeah, another great it's question from Rich Voss. Hey, Rich, uh, it's, let's it's, go down. It's like a child's question. Yeah, really. If the man was yelling at me, would he beat me up if I said don't? No, that's a great First question. First of all, I, I think statistically, the amount of Jews in prison are zero. And I think it, it's Just like, like white, in professional sports. White collar crime. They go to those country club places and they're out in like two months. That's, yeah. It's no Jews in prison. All right, let's go to uh, Alan Westbury. Al, it's proven. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Good. Uh, the reason that Joe Arpaio out in Tent City makes those prisons wear pink is because what he realized, like, when the guys get released from jail, they take with them, like, their blue denim and dungaree outfits, and it gives them, like, street cred out there. Like, I'm a big badass, I just got out of jail. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. So That's he figured that funny. if I dress them in pink, no guy in their right mind is going to walk around with pink pants out there. 
All right. Mm. I had no idea you could take that stuff home with you. I thought you had to bring yeah. it back. Give it you to would me. look like a badass on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, here's all a right. criminal justice uh, major. Wants to explain 10 City. It's Wes in Connecticut. Wes. Hey, Hello. what's up, guys? Hi. All right. Hey, um, my professor told, I guess, worked on the case. He was telling me that the inmates of 10 City actually tried to sue the state of Arizona and their corrections board because they said the pink was cruel and inhumane. And uh, the the courts ruled that, hey, tough luck, man. You guys are going to sit out there and you're going to wear pink and you're going to like it. Yeah, how could they say it's cruel? What do they do in Tent City? They just lounge around? Do they have to like do details? I think they work. I think it's like a work uh, oh. thing, like a chain gang. Oh, it's pretty yeah. much as close to a chain gang as they can get in this day and age. I don't know they have like working parties, and then it's just like it's like basically old canvas army tents with bunk beds in them, and that's what they sleep in. Oh wow! Hey boy, you get out there, boy. That's what you need. One of those good old time with the yeah. guys standing around with the shotgun and the sunglasses, uh, the Ray Bans, the big wad of chewing in. Like mouth. the ugly one from uh from Scarecrow who raped Al Pacino. I think that was the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, thank you, sir. Let's go to Tristan. Tristan, what's up? Hey, uh, what's going on? Hey, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, these guys, that are, especially that Penn City, you know, they, they, these these uh, prisons are like uh, <laughs> like golf courses or something. I, I did 10 years in a real prison called Attica. Oh, and, uh, little place named Attica. Little place you play, called Attica. Did you play the big room, sir? <laughs> <laughs> what'd you do? Yeah, what'd you do there? Uh, well, oh, at the prison or what I do to get No, there? what'd you do to make Attica? Well... I uh, I took a bottle, a broken bottle, to my girlfriend's uh, husband, so in a bar down in Boston. And uh, what happened to the the guy? Uh, he's talking through an uh, electric uh, voice box. Sounds like that guy uh, off of South Park. Mm, blimey! <laughs> <laughs> wow, you, you cut out his voice box. Why'd you do that? I uh, he beat the shit out of my uh, sister with a baseball. Yeah, to figure what the hell. All right, wait a minute. Oh. Uh, you just cursed. So this guy oh, beat the crap out of your sister with a baseball bat? Yeah. So you decided to take a bottle to his neck, basically? It, it didn't really, uh, it just eventually went that far. You yeah. Know, I, I didn't think, yeah, I'm going to go stab this guy, but uh, it got bad, and uh, that's the first thing, you know, I just ended up, the bottle ended up breaking, so I just picked it up. <laughs> Note to <laughs> self. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Note to yeah. self. Mm -hmm. No more public appearances <laughs> for the Opie and Anthony show. Hey, yeah, all right. Wait, well, did, listeners are scaring me. No kidding, hey, did, man. Did people know what you did in jail? Yeah, people do know. Like uh, the one guy said, the first year is the toughest. You definitely got to prove yourself. But uh, if you think about it, with a name like Tristan, I've kind of had to prove myself my whole life. It's kind of a femi name. Yeah, yeah uh, you got a little yeah. femi name. Yeah, uh, I kind of, I kind of do. I'll admit that. And that's not my mom's fault. So. But uh, my my whole life, I took kickboxing just to <laughs> just to back my name up. So you definitely got to prove yourself. And in Attica, there's a couple of spots where they keep kind of like uh, underground fights, you know. So it helps out if you, if you at least win a couple of fights, you probably get get the crap kicked out of you. Once prison twice, Fight but. Club. Wait, it's like Prison yeah, Fight yeah. Club. Kind of, it's kind of like Fight Club, but the prison guards they know what's going on. It, it's and uh, the pedophiles. Yeah. They, they, they're definitely not rats up there. Nobody, it, nobody. I, I was there for nine years, and I'll tell you what. I've, I might have seen two or three people get raped the whole time. You know, people do not like gay people in there. They do not like pedophiles, rapists. I'm a little just, disappointed with the prison uh, rape stats that we're hearing from the actual convicts. Yeah, I've always heard it's less than you think. Yeah, it is definitely less disappointing. Than you think. What do you do now, Tristan? I actually own a landscaping business. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. What do you use to cut the grass? A bottle? <laughs> <laughs> are you allowed to talk if you're white? Are you allowed to hang out or talk at all to the black the black convicts if you're white? You do realize you're a guest black on the show, right? not a host. I'm just asking. <laughs> I like a <laughs> simple <laughs> little question. I love Voss's. Voss has a ch he's child -like he is questions. child like. Oh Could God. I talk to the black people if I was there? Is oh, it a I bad place? <laughs> Hold on, yeah. sir. My nephew wants to know uh, if, if, if he'd be allowed to talk to the flag. <laughs> my nephew. <laughs> it's bring your nephew to work day. Uh, he has a question for you, sir. Just oh. humor him. Isn't that oh. a normal question? What's no, wrong with yeah, that? Yeah. No, not for a, a, a man in his 40s. Look, so Could you have a puppy in prison? <laughs> you guys. When are you going to be on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, by the way? Have they called you yet? 
No, no, I'm yeah. playing the fifth grader. No, Wait, so that was the joke, dope. Oh. <laughs> no, you're a contestant. <laughs> Oh, Holy crap. <laughs> so, wait, now, Voss had a very valid question. Are you allowed to talk that, to black people there? That, that, that's another thing that's uh, really misconstrued. Uh, um, everybody in, in the in the big-time prisons, you know, they, they all help each other out. I mean, it, initially, they definitely hate each other. Like, the Aryans, they, they definitely hate the black people. But, you know, Aryans got stuff that black people want. Black people got stuff the Aryans want. Yeah, there's commerce it, going on. You know, it's just like... Uh, the world, Japanese and uh, Americans, they got stuff we want. We got stuff they want. We'll still bomb the crap out of them if we ever want to. <laughs> Did you join the Aryans? Uh, you know what? I didn't join them, but they, they definitely did back me up because I made a couple of them a lot of money in a couple of those fights. So if I ever needed help with uh, like a, a black guy, I, really, I, I beat a black guy up really bad, and uh, a couple of his buddies wanted to come after me and I uh, you know I didn't even have to ask them for help they uh, they said I made them about five six hundred dollars so that's nice so yeah. Those Aryans. Right at me. All right. sweet people all right, we're gonna take one Thanks, more man. thank you Tristan you're cool right don't want don't want to hang up on any of these guys you're all yeah, right yeah you're right Yo, uh, why aren't you just hanging oh, up on hell? Yeah. yeah, right. These guys are getting the most courteous. All right, thanks for calling. Godspeed. Anything else you want to say? Shock uh, Jock's head removed with a weed whacker. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> You gotta know your place, man. But we you, all know our place in this world. You yell and scream at the at the at the mom, the soccer mom in her minivan if she cuts you off. But if it's if it's some kind of uh, you know gang member, you're you're not uh, even honking or doing the, anything. Look down, lock that, your doors. That, that is the reality. We all know our place out there. Mm -hmm. What? Just flip a couple of gang signs. You'll eventually get it right. They're all messed up. All right, thank you, Chris. Uh, best call of the day. Yeah. Uh, oh. Chip in Kentucky. What's up? Hey, guys. How are you doing today? Hi, Chip. All right. You did 24 months for manslaughter. Uh, yeah, I shot a guy six times in the face with his own pistol. <laughs> well, <laughs> All right. I'm going to take a different approach. So how did you find out about the Opie and Anthony show? Oh, I'm, uh, I own my own truck now, and uh, of course <laughs> I have XM. So I was, I've been listening to you guys for about... Oh, probably since uh, you came on XM about two, two and a half years ago. Cool. So some guy uh, was probably menacing you with a weapon. You took his gun from him and shot him, and they considered it a little uh, excessive. Well, he was actually harassing me. I used to be a DJ, guys, uh, in a small little town in Kentucky, uh, did radio and sports casting, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, Sorry. I was actually messing around with the guy's girlfriend. Okay, and uh, he uh, he came up to me at work uh, one evening and approached me with you know pistol in hand, and initially I I ran from him, and you know I'm Good move. I'm a decent sized guy though, so it was like I finally got fed up. Running, got, actually got tired. Uh, he chased me down an alley, uh, and when he turned the corner, I tripped him. He dropped his gun, and I picked it up and shot him six times. So you not only had sex with his girlfriend, you killed him by shooting him in the face. Shot him in the face. Did, did you get back in time to seg the record? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hope you were playing a long Zeppelin tune or something. People had two years of pump up the jam. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Uh, I my last time on uh, on air was uh, eighty seven. That was uh, <laughs> oh. that was my last sign on period. Yeah. Uh, right. But uh, I, the reason why I got only twelve, uh, or excuse me, I got twenty four months and then in prison, then I had to do three years probation, uh, and I wasn't allowed to return to the small town in Kentucky until uh, <laughs> until my probation was up. Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the live version of Greengrass and High Tides. <laughs> I'm going to be away for a while. <laughs> uh, but I told him that uh, I had blanked out. Yeah. You know, that I didn't remember what uh, what exactly happened, which was, you know, hmm. Bravo Sierra. But <laughs> <laughs> well, two years for manslaughter. Uh, and I got a good lawyer. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, a lot of people are saying on instant feedback, this is a true shock jock that we're talking to right yeah. now, man. <laughs> that is doesn't get, shocking. Uh, doesn't get mo much more shocking than this. Hey, wah, wah. <laughs> all right, uh, Chip, and uh, uh, you had all the luxuries in jail? Um, I, I spent um, my time in Eddyville, yeah. which is uh, the federal penitentiary. It's also where they have the uh, 
where they actually do the executions in Kentucky. Ooh. Um, and it, it's a uh, pretty run down, dilapidated, you know, piece of crap. Um, it, black and white TVs. Uh, if you could get any reception, it's, uh, it's out on, almost on an island in the middle of a lake. Were you beaten up in jail at all? They try, I, I was jumped by a couple of, uh, blacks, but, uh, I was able to get my revenge. Okay. Were uh, you able to I, talk I to the, them? In the brotherhood, we'll put it that way, and, uh. Rich, you got a yeah. question for, uh, Chip? Uh, not right now, because, uh, you know, it's just. Well, you know, yeah, I got a question because the last caller, they said you got to prove yourself, but the last caller said he beat this guy up too bad, then his friends came after him. So do you have to prove yourself but draw a line as you're proving yourself? You know what I mean? How bad can you beat a guy before they come after you? Uh, you in prison, it, it, you can offend anyone with, you know, you, you can accidentally bump into somebody and you've offended them and their entire clique, gang, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you're, you're gonna get beat down. Uh, you know, I was a fresh fish. I, I think I was in for a month when I, when I took, uh, a, a, a very good beating. I spent, uh, two weeks in the infirmary. What did you do? Like, uh, what happened? Why'd you take a beating? Well, I offended, <laughs> uh, a couple of black guys. On purpose? Uh, they, they had, they were actually uh, local in my area, and uh, they knew that I really didn't. Uh, the, the area of Kentucky where I'm from, I, I, I'm just going to let you know that it's a, it's extremely white. Right. And uh, Utopia, Connecticut, right? Uh, uh, Kentucky. <laughs> there used to be a sign in town that said, "Don't let the sun sit on your black ass." Oh, one of those. Out, uh, one of those. Found out that I was from there. Uh, that just, okay. you know. All right. <laughs> hey, hey, Chip, uh, I don't want to be rude, uh, but uh, we do have to move on. Yeah, so. we got to move on now. Any so. final right, thoughts? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's been great. You guys have. And then what happened? Great. Yeah, yeah, right. No. All right, Chip. I'm not playing that game. I understand. <laughs> and I'm not even going to. He does it. listen a lot. I'm not <laughs> stupid. Thank you, All right, Mr. Chip. Chip. Thanks, guys. Uh, we like Chip. How can you not? He's a good guy. He's in everything delicious. Do we continue with this? We got, uh, I was sexually harassed in jail. You Lisa, have to. Lisa you have from to. Arizona did a year in 10th City. Like an episode of Oz. And Richard uh, from Jersey, I'm gay, did seven years. We aren't segregated. Mm. Must be like a, uh, being uh, sentenced to a strip club when you go to prison <laughs> and you're gay. It's just like... <laughs> let's, uh, let's say hi to Jocelyn. She's a girl from Jersey, of course. What's up, Jocelyn? Hello? Where did Jocelyn go? Are you there? Oh, my God. She hung up. It was the best call of the day. What? Uh, she spent time at the joint and wanted to talk about all the uh, lesbianism that was oh, going no. on. Oh, no. I, we, I bet we, it was big, ugly, dykey yeah. lesbian And we lost stuff. her. Lisa in Arizona, what's up? Make you feel hey, better. how you guys doing? Uh, Good. I want to tell you about Tent City, the most disgusting place in the world. It costs more to feed a dog in the pound than it does to feed a prisoner in Tent City. Wow. They oh. give you, it's gross, they give you, uh, like, the old bread that sits in a grocery store gets taken to Tent City. So it's moldy bread, green bologna, and then every night they give you, like, cabbage. And you have to be afraid to drink the Kool-Aid because the guys that work in the kitchen could have hepatitis. <laughs> uh, now, how do, you, how do you know all this? Uh, I was there. Oh, what'd you do? Uh, Bad girl. Boozing and cruising. Boozing and cruising? Uh, yeah. Do we? Yeah, I got what? quite a few of them, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not your first Dewey if they sing it at Tent City. Nope, they sent me to the big bad place. How many Deweys? Huh? How many Deweys do you have? Be honest. Uh, uh, four. Oh, God. Four? What's wrong with you? I you can't drink and drive. I almost understand two. Almost. After that, you they must really like be bad. Really, I could see my house. I could see my house. They yeah, all say that. It was, it was on your windshield. <laughs> I, you know, it's like when you're playing tag as a kid, you get to go home base. 
Yeah. You know, they should let you do that. When you're pretty much in your driveway, they should let you. You yeah. ate it there. You didn't kill anyone. <laughs> they should you let know? you get away with it. Hey. Oh, she made it home. Let her inside. We we talk all the time. Uh, drunk driving used to be a sport back in the day. Yep. I know. It's not fair. Remember the well, days the cops would, like, pull you over, realize you're drunk with your buddies, and go, all right, I'm taking your keys. There's a diner nearby. I'll be back at the end of my shift to give you your keys yeah. back. That's, yeah, that that did, type like, of thing used to happen. Home. Yeah, all that stuff. You must be really a bad drunk, though. You're probably one of those that really weaves a lot uh, and, and, and talks back to the cops. I think it's more driving drunk and angry that does it. It's yeah. Like angry or you're, like, listening to your stereo, singing to a song. Wait, wait how do you drive drunk angry? Are you just knocking down, like, uh, mailboxes? Driving too fast. Driving too fast. Just pissed off. You know when you're pissed off. When, yeah, when you're, I know you know you got that fast car. Yeah, yeah, but let me tell you something. If I've been drinking and I have to drive somewhere, unless uh, it's uh, Fourth of July of last year, um, I usually <laughs> make sure I do the speed limit. Um, I don't care if I it takes me forever to get to wherever I'm going. I use my blinkers. I'm like really kind of safe. I set the cruise control so I'm not like my speed isn't changing a lot. And I can concentrate just on on staying in the lane, things like that. There's a way to drive drunk. Yeah. You don't yeah. know it. Well, see, they say for every time you've driven drunk, if you, every time you've driven drunk, you get caught. You've driven drunk a thousand times. Ooh. Well, so that math might be a little off. That's a little yeah. off. That's 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 that means that's you drive big. drunk drive every night for over three years. Pretty much. It probably yeah. has. Yeah, that means you drive really drunk bad. to Starbucks to get your morning coffee. Oh, coffee. Wow. You drink coffee. I drink Gatorade and vodka. You're great. <laughs> Gatorade and vodka. Nice. Hey, <laughs> hey, did you get my check I sent you last uh, month? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, Kent City's disgusting. It's the worst place. It's 120 degrees. You get all these girls in a tent, and girls stink. Girls are the stinkiest creatures on earth, and very few of them would shower. How many girls in a tent? Uh, 40. You get oh, any? Wow. Uh, you get any action or what? Uh, no, no, they were the nastiest girls. I, I did make some friends. I, I, all my friends were guys till I went to jail. I did meet a lot of uh, friends. You know, they were all pretty much drunk drivers that I was in there with. Bad check riders, shoplifters. I wasn't in there. Yeah, with chicks, the, uh, chicks in prison are always in it for that. You get the w occasional uh, one that you know killed the husband or something, but for the most part, it's bad checks and DWEs, uh, yeah. things like that. Well, w welfare scams. When I was in the holding cell, there was this chick that robbed a bank. And Ooh. then they go to different parts. There's like an indoor building and another side of the tents where the real bad girls go. So, yeah. So were there uh, girls that had kind of girlfriends in there? Yeah, there were. There were. Yeah. And, and the one that was there was, uh, she was kind of a guy, you know. Her name was Michael, and she had short hair, and she kind of looked like a guy, too. Was there any uh, air conditioning at all or f fans? Air conditioning. They're outside. No, in the, the tents. Tent. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, any what? Air fans conditioning. Or anything? No, there's a big fan, like a huge fan at, at each side of the tent that blows. Get this. On one side, there's the like a garbage dump. On the other side, there's an animal crematory. <laughs> and then there's a water treatment plant. So no matter which way the wind blows, you get the most rancid smell you could possibly have. Wow, ever they breathe. really place Not this. Not to mention the nasty girls in the tent already. And you got snakes crawling in there because you're in Arizona, right? Scorpions, scorpions. I'm sure the people that work at those other three stinky facilities are complaining about the stinky women yeah. fumes that are coming off of the prison. Yeah, yeah it's worse outside in 120 degrees. Uh, Lisa, and a lot of people are picking up on something. Did you learn your lesson? It sounds like you oh, still yeah, drink and drive. Yeah, definitely. I still don't drive. Oh, you I don't? I still don't drive. No. Nah. What do you have, I could years? have my license back, but I still don't drive. I have a car that sits there, and if I drink, I do it at home. It's amazing. It's just she won't a glass of red wine here and there. I, I don't booze it out anymore. What an algae. She gave up driving. So she yeah, so drink. you can drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I live in Florida now. That's and every dedication. Time I get the money yeah. saved up, something crappy happens like a hurricane. So I guess uh, God doesn't want me to drive. Which is fine. I Hurricane's really, a good I like drink. Yeah, those down in uh, oh, yeah. New Orleans. You know how many, yeah. you know many homes get ruined a year? <laughs> many uh, homes. <laughs> many home. <laughs> homes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really gross place. I just wanted to let you guys know it's not that nice of a place. And right. the pink underwear, that's the guys. It's because the guys were taking them out, giving them to their girlfriends, boxers and stuff. Girls were wearing, at the time, girls were wearing boxers. Yeah. And he actually sells. Sheriff Joe makes money so many different ways there. 
He'll sell on the outside right. pink underwear that right, says we'll Sheriff Joe. And right. Yeah, he's uh, right, walking his wear. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great day, guys. Yeah, you too. Let's you know, say hi to one guy. You, oh. one, one prison you're bored with. The, yeah, one, well. the first one that you get a little crap to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The chick who didn't do anything violent. Yeah. <laughs> no, no hit, Herlock. <laughs> I know she can't even. <laughs> I know she can't even drive to find me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, she's pretty much stuck at home. I'm brave now. All right, let's say hi to Jocelyn. She's oh. back. Boss, awesome. Jocelyn. Yes. Hey. Hi. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> you were in prison for for what? No, I was in county jail for six months in Elizabeth. What'd you do? What, what'd you do? Drug possession. All right. Nice. What drugs? <laughs> Coke and heroin. Yeah. Coke and heroin? And now, yeah. how much did you have on you? Oh, I had a lot. I had um, 20 bags of heroin and a oh. couple clips. So you got intent to sell or something? Yeah, and I was in a school zone. It was me and my uh, friends at the time. <laughs> in a school zone? <laughs> she was naked having sex with a student. and she. How many other things can you throw into this? Wow. Why were you in a school zone? Well, that's where you sell the drugs. No, I understand that, but I don't think that's why she was there. I think it's something stupid. Why were you in the school zone? Well, the whole town of Elizabeth is in a school zone. They do it like that to get you in trouble. They put ah. it up like that. But I was only 18, and I grew up in a small town in Old Bridge. So I was in for a big shock when I went to there. And This is getting hot now. Yeah. 18, sent to prison. Mm. Yes, and actually I thought, I heard all these horror stories, I thought it was going to be really bad, but the women, what they do is they like, they wife each other, and there's just like a lot of lesbian activity that goes around, they make like socks, out of socks and soap, like dildos and stuff. Really? Yeah, and it's it's not bad, the only fighting what? really is if you get with somebody else's wife. Yeah, alright, so... um did you have all these girls like uh, coming on to you when you were in the joint for six months? Yes, because I'm white. I had real hair and all my teeth. So, you know. That's yeah, all they're looking yeah, for? They're looking for yeah. white, all your hair, and all your teeth. Yeah, because some of them Sounds are like me in junior high. <laughs> That's all I was <laughs> looking for. <laughs> what? Some of them were really scary in there. They really looked like men. They'd walk around with like socks in their pants to pretend like they had something. Were they really? Oh my I God. do the same thing. Wow. <laughs> and, but also to the correction officers. Mm. Yeah. Know, would, and I uh, hooked up with the correction officer when I was in there. How hot is that? Backing up to the bars, were you? <laughs> yeah, how'd you get it done? Uh, he worked in medical, so he would just call me down for, you know, say there was a medical appointment. Ah, time for your enema. <laughs> you know, and wait, 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 wait. This is, uh, you know, we can't just blow this right. off. So you're in the joint, and you decide you like this guy. Well, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. You know, I mean, he had access to cigarettes and McDonald's. So ah, oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's cigarettes cool. and McDonald's that's worth your dignity. Yeah, least, sure, of least, course. At least, you, at least you went for the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Almighty, you <laughs> traded in your. You, you want to do <laughs> the next live read from McDonald's for us? Because uh, <laughs> look, I don't sell my body. I've got Triscuits. All right. <laughs> so teen body. So, so you give them cigarettes him, and McDonald's. Do you give them the look like, hey, you know, I know what's going on here, and I'm I'm willing to to to, to partake. Yeah, well, he wanted to save me. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well, got yeah, us they, a crusader. I mean, when I got out, I tried seeing him, but he got uh, got crazy. So that was that. he got crazy. Yeah. You were in the joint. All right, so he he calls you down to the medical office. Then what happens? You know, he'd have his buddies look out because you know they all kind of had their own thing going on on the side. You know, they're all married and everything, and it, that's just what they do. All right, so what's the move? I, we, we need to hear the move. You're in the medical... Uh, yeah, how did it first go down? You know, you just start talking, and, you know, he tells you tell them your sad story, and they feel bad, and then, you know, he starts complimenting you, and then, you know, his buddies do the lookout. It's usually later, you know, during the day or, or on the shift, and, you know, the, you have to make sure that his people... You know, cover his back. Uh huh. You know? So what? What's the move? It's just kind of you know, it's an agreement when you're in there. I mean, they know what's going on. I mean, so does he lean over and kiss you? Lot. Yeah, and then you know, it just goes from there. Do you eat to McDonald's as he's doing it? <laughs> <laughs> Are you uh, and and you guys go all out or what? Yeah, and I mean, like I said, I I tried to continue the relationship once I got out, but he was just too crazy. Yes. Were you into it? 
At the time, yeah. yeah. How long did you see him for once you got out? A couple months. Okay. So yeah. you're 18. When did you start doing heroin? Oh, 15. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. How old are you now? Yeah. Oh, I'm 25. I've been clean for three years. I went back to school and everything. So. Oh, what do you do now? What? What, what do, you do? do you do? Oh, I'm still in school for uh, nursing. All right. I want to I want to help all the young uh, women that were like me. So if the patient <laughs> and you also want to get into that drug yeah. cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> and if, the pa if a patient brings you in, uh, say some cigarettes and something to eat, do you see it with a patient? What? She's going to be one of these nurses that uh, guys dream about, oh, man. You're dirty. in, you're in, you're in uh, the hospital with a broken leg, and there you go. She's ready to go. For a sponge bath, right? All right. Thank you, Joc uh, Bye. Jocelyn. Bye, Jocelyn.